All right. <coughs> Recording is on. Uh, welcome to BC 309. We're going to get our class started. Let's take a moment to pray and uh, start. Good morning, everybody. Good to see all of you. Can somebody just lead us in prayer, please? And then we will get started. Would like to pray? All right. Okay. Asha, go ahead and pray. All that you have to say, God, that you plan to listen and promote our own life, God. I thank you so much for each one of our classmates so that they um, grow in wisdom and knowledge and in strength, Lord. I pray that you pour out your spirit uh, to Pastor Ashir as he comes, God. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Welcome, everyone, to the class. Um, yesterday, we... Um, started talking about some strategies for urban missions. We're just looking at, um, okay, let me just share the notes so you can all look at it together. PDF. All right. So we were talking about strategies for urban evangelism or urban missions. So, you know, when you are pioneering a church in a city, planting a church in a city, one of the things that we have to do is to think about how to reach people in the city. And so we're just discussing or sharing you know, some of our learnings along those lines. Um, we said that, <clears throat> sorry, we would look at strategies for different age groups we would also look at strategies for different areas of need in the city. Uh, we could also look at strategies for different spheres of activity, you know, uh, different uh, um, areas, for example, education, government, business, so on and so forth, different spheres. We could target uh, in different spheres. We talk about some of those things. Uh, we can also look at leveraging tools uh, to reach people. And most importantly, we said, you know, we need to disciple people, equip them so that they can then reach out to more people. So we started talk, talk, talking about the first one, which is strategies for different age groups. We spoke a little bit about children, reaching children, what can be done. Uh, and then, you know, uh, there are many, many, many ways to serve children. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, what we've talked about are the only ways. Um, God will give people uh, different ideas, different strategies, whether you're reaching a small community or whether you're serving hundreds of children, you know, it doesn't matter. That, but you know, each one starts off uh, with doing what God has called us to do, and then we go from that. So God can give us different ideas, different parts of the world, different places. He can give us different ideas you know, to serve people. So children we talked about, and we talked about the youth, and um, uh, what we were uh, sharing yesterday was that, you know, we need to understand urban youth. What are the challenges they're going through? What are their struggles today? You know, especially now that, you know, uh, we've gone through a pandemic. A lot, many of them, their education would have been disturbed in some way families could have been affected, so many things are there. So we need to understand what are they going through? How can we meaningfully reach out to them? And um, you know, we, I, I shared some of the things that we have done here, trying to do it. Also, we need to do things a little differently now, post pandemic, based on what's available. And we are beginning to look into those things. Um, we, uh, you know, one of the things we used to do 
in the past was having youth concerts. So these were music concerts um, where we would we would just in, we let people know it's a Christian music concert in the sense that it's not a concert in the typical sense like a rock band or something. No, it's a Christian. It's, it's, it's hosted by the church, and then we just invite people to come. So we did that in in in, in, uh, in, in we've done I think at least one or two I can remember in our own city in Bangalore. And then we did some youth concerts in Mangalore. I think we did it twice. And we you know just be uh, our worship team, but singing songs, and, you know, in a more contemporary style that will be more relevant to the youth. And they would come in, and then we would always share a gospel message, and pray and minister to people, and so on. So that's just another way to reach out to people. Um, uh, you could have uh, youth meetings or events where you could invite people to come, uh, like you know you could have a camp, a picnic, so on. They come and uh, they 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 interact. They are exposed to the gospel, and lives can be touched. So, so these are just a few things. There can be many things that we can think about as we reach youth. The next area we want to talk about are young adults. <clears throat> so here we talk about people who have. You know, they've come out of college, they've started working, young professionals, uh, and then they are in that stage of life where uh, they want to do well professionally, uh, and they're also, you know, they've started to think about marriage and so on. So uh, they're in their, you know, we would say mid to mid 20s on, 20, 20, fire up. Uh, they are in that stage of life. They want to grow professionally and they're thinking about marriage as well. So how do we serve this age group? Now, uh, some of the things that we've tried to do uh, from time to time, uh, one is we have professional uh, Christian, we call it Christian professional conferences. Uh, basically, it's a one-day conference where we will uh, address, uh, we will talk about uh, themes that are relevant to those who are in the workplace, professionals, but from a biblical perspective. So um, it's a time for professionals to come together. It's a time for these young professionals to see that there are other professionals who, you know, they've, they've journeyed through their career maybe and, and they're still they are believers, they're Christians in the workplace. Uh, so the workplace could be difficult, there could be lots of challenges, but they can be inspired by just you know, interacting with uh, professionals who are older, but who are believers. So that's that's a good thing. They can build connections, build, you know, build relationships. And also hear some practical things on how people are navigating the workplace as believers, applying biblical principles and so on. So this professionals conference is, you know, is this, is this a platform forum, an opportunity for them to become and be inspired in their faith? But it's something relevant to that age group. Right? They are, they're in the workplace, they're starting off the professional life, and they do have questions. How can I be a Christian in a workplace? What, what, you know, how do I maintain my faith? How do I, uh, um, you know, uh, do things in a proper way, in an ethical manner, and so on. Not these practical questions. Uh, so uh, another important thing that has happened in the past was uh, workplace groups. Now, um, we, uh, I can't think of anything happening at the moment because you know, people are still coming back to work and all those things are still, uh, still unsure. But before the pandemic, we used to have workplace groups. That means uh, in the workplace, um, they used to meet for prayer. So this, uh, in some situations, uh, people were allowed to use the facility like a conference room or something with permission. In some cases, they would meet outside of the office facility because uh, you're not allowed to do that in the office. So they meet outside for prayer and so on. So just depending on you know what is allowed in those contexts, they would just meet for prayer sometimes, 15 minutes, half an hour, just pray and go on. So that, uh, that's also a way where they could invite others, uh, other young people, to come uh, 
who may not be of the faith, but they can just come for prayer and then they are exposed to um, things uh, of the faith. We've also uh, done, uh, you know, special seminars. Uh, preparing for marriage would be one of those topics which would attract these people, young adults, because they are thinking about marriage. They're, you know, in their mid-20s, late-20s. They begin to think, okay. Um, so when we have a seminar on preparing for marriage, it does attract a lot of these young people. They would come, uh, look at it from a biblical perspective. How do you prepare yourself for marriage? Uh, what are the things you need to be ready in, in order for marriage? So again, those special seminars would be useful. Uh, for some life skills, you know, what are the skills and practical things? These are topics that would attract them, they would come. And I think also a very important part for young people are these small groups. You know, we call them life groups here. Uh, some people may call them home groups. Uh, these gr home groups are also very important for young adults because um, many of them would have come into the city, they would have left their home, you know, uh, wherever their home city is. Uh, they've moved into the city uh, because of work. And uh, so they are, you know, uh, looking for community. They're looking for meaningful friendships and relationships. So these life groups become an important uh, piece in their spiritual journey. So uh, this also is very useful, you know, when they can meet with other young people, young adults, um, uh, whether men can men meet with men, boy, uh, women meet with girls, meet with girls, or sometimes they even meet in family groups. So whatever works for them. Uh, but it becomes very important to them becoming strong in their faith and being, you know, it becomes an opportunity also to reach out to new people. So these are some things that uh, that seem to have worked for us in our context here in Bangalore City to reach this age group, young adults. We're talking about, you know, mid twenties on towards their thirties, you know, they're in, in their professional life, preparing for marriage, that stage. Uh, these are some of the things that have been very useful. Let me pause here. Uh, anything else uh, anybody wants to share uh, that you have found useful uh, for the young adult age group? You know, we're talking 25 to about 33 or that age group, and they're about any other, th any thoughts, anybody, any, from your experience, from what you're doing, do you want to share anything? For young professionals, anybody wants to share? Okay. So we have to think, um, you know, what what are their needs? Uh, this particular age group uh, in the community that you're working, and then think about what can be done to serve them. And then through that, we introduce them to Jesus, introduce them to the word of God and help them grow in their faith, in their spiritual journey. So let's just talk about some of the other age groups and just share a few thoughts as, uh, on other age groups. So when you think about married families, married people or families, uh, what are some of the things that can be done to reach people? So here, um, marriage courses, marriage seminars, or workshops um, would be useful. Um, also, workshops for parenting would be useful you know, for that age group. So what we have done, uh, uh, what we did actually, uh, in 2000, um, I'm trying to think now, maybe we started this off in 2010, I'm thinking, uh, somewhere there in 2010, 2011, uh, we, um, we um, created something called Christmas Counseling. So it's just a ministry of the church. Uh, we just gave it a name, Christmas Counseling. And the idea was uh, we would have trained professional Christian counselors. That, that means these are people who, you know, most of them have, like they've studied psychology or done something 
like that, and they're professional counselors, but they're believers, Christians, and they will provide counseling for people. Um, so we were looking at both uh, people in the church plus people outside the church um, as a way for us to serve them as well. So some of what Christless Counseling has done and continues to do typically every year is to have uh, workshops on parenting and on marriage. And what we've done in the past, again, I'm, I'm talking about pre-pandemic. Pre now, after pandemic, we're just slowly bringing these things back. But previous pre-pandemic, what we were doing is we would do parenting workshop, and we would intentionally open it out or, or advertise it or promote it outside of the church community. Of course, uh, uh, the church community was part of who we invited, but we'd also invite people outside the church community. In some situations, I remember we've done parenting workshops inside uh, 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 an, like an apartment complex. And so uh, we would go get permission, of course, and then run a parenting workshop there uh, where you know there were several hundreds of families living in that complex, invite them. And uh, we saw that non-Christians were willing to come for a parenting workshop, even though they knew it was very clear that it was being hosted by a church. A church was running a parenting workshop. No Christians came. Uh, we did that um, once at a hotel. Um, actually, we did a marriage workshop in a hotel, and no, many non Christian couples came. Uh, they knew it was being run by a church. But they came, you know, they were willing to come and listen and learn. Uh, we also done a parenting workshop in, in Anglo, which is another city. And there again, we had a, a good response from people who are non-Christians. They would come to listen uh, because, you know, uh, challenges in parenting or marriage, it's something, it's not just for Christians, it's for everybody. Everybody faces questions and challenges in these areas. It's common. So um, let me run a workshop for a par for parenting workshop or a marriage workshop. Uh, we can open it out to people. And it's very clear that it's coming. It's a, it's a church that's hosting the workshop or a seminar. So they know it's coming from a Christian perspective. But they would come and listen. And it, it's an opportunity for them to interface with the church. And, and you know, if they're interested, they can always explore a little bit more. So uh, we've done those kinds of things to serve people. And of course, the counseling service always remains available. So people come to receive one-on-one -on -one counseling. That's an ongoing thing. In fact, what we are finding these days is there are uh, at least 10 new people every month who are reaching out for, for help counseling and so the numbers are growing meaning uh, we have the ongoing people who are being served but then there are at least 10 new people reaching out every month saying, hey, I, you know for some sort of counseling help uh, so that uh, that's the, and it's open to people from the church and outside the church so we're not restricting it. but this this counseling you know service workshop parenting it help, has really helped us serve people in this age group, marriages and families. But the fact is the need here is huge. It's big for this age group. You know, people, let's say, mid-35 up on through till their 50s. You know, they're going through these problems, um, whether uh, marriage or parenting. They're having those struggles. And if we could address that, you know, it, it becomes a great opportunity for ministry. And then we do these men's conferences, women's conference. These are actually, actually tailored for believers. Uh, so uh, strengthen the believers in here. Right? And then senior citizens, which are older people. Now, I have to confess that we have not done too much in this area. Uh, we haven't uh, put, a, put in a lot of thought and effort in here, uh, which I think we need to. But that again is an age group that needs to be addressed. Where as people, you know, uh, uh, 
go into, say, they come out of the workplace, they step into maybe a retirement or a semi-retirement stage, you know, how do we serve them? Uh, that's something we need to, uh, we can do, uh, but we at APC have not done much. Uh, we need to think more on that. Let me pause here and see if anybody else has any thoughts and ideas on reaching uh, you know, this, this age group, the married families, senior citizens, will take some thoughts and ideas on that. Uh, Shri Kumar, go ahead, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I just want to know, um, um, when you, um, this about the counseling part. Mm -hmm. So do we, do we also have any counseling for the youths? Um, and also, do we have any counseling regarding to, especially for the youths when they are going through certain depressions and uh, so many challenges, even they also have, and also helping them to uh, to take the right direction regarding to their career. So many many youths they may be struggling on that area. So do we have uh, even such kind of a programs where um, you know where we strengthen how we are like strength focusing on married couples and others? Do we have that also? Thank you, Pastor. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent question. Um, the answer to that is uh, actually, right now we don't have those kind of counselors, but I am actually interviewing people now because we wanted to, we, we have three counselors, but these people are kind of more geared towards uh, uh, like what we're saying, the marriage and uh, parenting, and those kinds of, that area, that is their uh, expertise. So right now I mean, uh, we are interviewing counselors who would serve exactly what you mentioned. We're, we're trying to find, uh, we, we really need a counselor for children, children and, uh, you know, that age group that is still about 18, 19. And we're also interviewing for counselors for the young adults. That is, uh, they've come out of college and they're in that state. They're not, you know, married. Or, so their problems are not marriage and parenting. Uh, their, their problems. So we're actually looking for counselors, interviewing right now, counselors to fill these two areas. But that's exactly what you have picked up. What we used to do in the past is, you know, when um, we either, these children would speak to the children's pastor or um, the youth would speak to the youth pastor. That, that happens, it continues to happen, but the pastors are not counselors, like meaning they're not trained to, to deal, deal with some complex problems. No, you know, they would definitely care for people, care for the children or the youth spiritually and guide them, uh, but they're not professional counselors to deal with some to more complex situations. Also, uh, like you pointed out, uh, a lot of these young people need career counseling. That means, um, you know, how do I make choice about my what what courses to take, what career to pursue? Again, so the pastors are not necessarily equipped to do that. That's not what they're focused on. So, uh, in the past, we we've done workshops, you know, career, and actually, yeah. We've done it, I think at least once a year, we should do this uh, workshop on career choices and all of that. Uh, that was a small response to this need, but uh, what we realized after the pandemic is that we need to have dedicated counselors for children and for young, young adults. We are interviewing counselors for that. So the challenge is, you know, we need Christian counselors and not just people or general counselors because those people are available outside they can go uh, but we are looking for people who who are good professionally uh, but also they need to have us you know um, uh, a good spiritual thing so we're interviewing people but that's exactly the need we're trying to fill right now and we'll have them as full-time counselors as part of Christmas counseling so good point we're trying to address it now thank you sir thank you Charles, you have something to say? Yes, uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, my my contribution was about the marriage fellowship, mm -hmm. the church. 
arranges the Marides Fellowship and uh, the, the Marides are also separated in two, two. There are the young Marides and even those that are seniors, the senior citizens. So uh, mm -hmm. that's what they do with the marriage type. They have the Marides Fellowship or home sales and they are able to do that. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to say. Nice. Mm -hmm. Good. That's, that's, that's good. So, I, I, you know, that particular, like, that particular stage in life, um, from the time they get married on, their journey through parenting and all that, uh, there's a lot of tension because people have to balance family, work, children. So uh, there's a lot of need. And, uh, and, and, and honestly, I feel, at least my observation is, uh, the need is so great, uh, both in the church and outside. Uh, but uh, I, I feel, at least what we are doing is very, very little uh, compared to the need. Um, but if we can have more people, you know, like more counselors available, we can actually go more aggressively outside the church. You know, we can tell them, hey, look, uh, there is counseling available, there is help available for marriages and parenting, and, uh, you know, people can reach out. And it becomes a great opportunity, actually, to reach people outside the church um, because those needs are there. It's very real. Uh, people are struggling, uh, but we need to, you know, be able to like throw the net, so to speak. That is to say that we can help. But for that, we need good people. We need good counselors, and that I, f I feel is a challenge. You know, uh, interview people. <laughs> um, they may be good psychologists, at least in my observation from the interviews I've done. Um, they're good psychologists, you know, they, they've got their master's degree or whatever. But then, and, um, spiritually, you know, from a Bible side, we found them lacking. And so we, we are hesitant to bring them on board because uh, as is a church ministry, the spiritual emphasis is important for us. So we're still looking at, uh, but I believe it's a big need in the city and if the church can be positioned to you know serve those people uh, we can reach many people and through that reach those providing counseling and help for those marriages and parenting it's a great need good anybody else with any thoughts about things that's going on in your area okay so i see tarun's uh, sharing. I think it's an interesting observation Tarun has just shared. Uh, digital literacy to elderly people. Interesting. You know, I, I never thought of that, but uh, it's really true. You know, so when you're talking about that uh, uh, older group, uh, elderly people, uh, digital literacy, helping them, you know, just come up to speed with technology using some basic things. Uh, I think uh, it's interesting, interesting need, uh, and uh, I think we should try it out. And, and I think it'll also be a great way for young people to uh, to build a bridge between the young people and the elderly, uh, as young people can come in and very patiently and lovingly uh, share with the elderly. Yeah, this is how you use technology. This is how you use whatever you know, uh, and uh, and. Uh, be of assistance. I think it really helped build a bridge. Uh, I never thought of it, but thanks for sharing that. And it's something we should try. Uh, great. Uh, anything else? Any other thoughts on, on reach, reaching these different age groups? Any other experiences people want to share what you have done in your, uh, your parts of the world? Uh, in reaching different age groups. Okay. All right. So let's move forward. 
uh, we'll uh, talk a few more strategies. So one is, you know, you look at different age groups, and uh, I, I like that idea that Tarun just shared, you know, for senior citizens, uh, what it can do. Now, we have done a little bit of visiting to old age homes. Uh, that's usually around Christmas. Um, we did a little bit of that, but uh, like I mentioned, this is an area we need to do much more. We need to think about strategies, how to serve people better. Now, the second way we can develop strategies is by addressing areas of need in the city. And uh, of course, uh, there will be many areas of need. Uh, we cannot address all of them, but if God, you know, God would lead you to one or two to take those up, or uh, you can help other organizations address those needs. So that is something we have done uh, in the sense that, for example, you know, uh, in the area of drug addiction, you know, we as a church, uh, you know, for us to set up a rehab center and work, I mean, that's a big, big undertaking. Uh, and so we did not get into that ourselves, but what we have done and continue to do is to help uh, one other Christian organization that we know, uh, that's working in this area. So we help them uh, financially and uh, so that they can do the job, they know how to do it, uh, they have a place and you know all of those things. Uh, for us, we don't have the expertise, we don't have the people, but we can come behind them as they serve people in the city and if at all we run into people who need help, we refer them to that place. So that's kind of one way we've done that. Um, similarly, for people who are working in, uh, in the poor areas of our city, again, what we've done is uh, from time to time, we come alongside other people who are doing the work. Um, we have people from our own church who, who have their own ministry, you know, and so we try to encourage that. And, uh, you know, so we're not like, we don't, are not directly involved but we come alongside others who are doing the work because they have the time and they've got things in place to be able to serve others. So um, we can think about, you know, uh, other areas of need and, and how um, um, how to serve those people. But in, in, in many of these, you know, it does require uh, a certain kind of expertise. So example, a, a suicide. Okay, if you if you want to help people who are so who are at that point, you know, we need to have people who are trained who know how to do it, uh, and, and so that if there's a suicide helpline or something like that, uh, trained people should be able to answer the call and guide them. So, you know, uh, these are things that require certain skills, but we can think about it, you know, uh, and, and look at ways in which we can serve people. In the area of financial guidance, uh, what we have done is we do financial planning workshops uh, about three times a year. Uh, now, of course, this is primarily geared towards our own church people to provide them financial guidance, how to do it, uh, how to take care of, manage their own personal finances and so on. But it can also become an opportunity to invite people from outside the church. Um, if there's a need. Now, of course, financial guidance they can get from many sources, their own bankers and others, chartered accountants and so on. But it's it's an area of need because there are people, young people especially, who want to know how do I manage my money, how do I manage my income, how do I save, how do I invest, etc. And so this becomes a need. Uh, in, in, in helping people look for jobs, we have a small mechanism. So if people come, you know, yeah, it's part of our Christian professions ministry. Uh, they share their resume, and then uh, that resume gets distributed. Uh, and so we can, in, in, in some small way, it's not a big formal way, but in a small way, we try to help people find jobs uh, in, in their areas. So uh, I'm just mentioning that these are, you know, areas where work can be done in the city. And there could be many more areas that we can identify and try to help. 
and uh, through that you know, we can reach people in the city uh, and so on. Number three is uh, uh, different spheres of activity. So we think about education, arts, media, business, government, family, religion, uh, arts and entertainment, and look at how the church can get in there and uh, do something. One of the common areas in, in, the, in this arts entertainment sphere, of course, has been sports outreach. Um, you know, you, uh, now we have, we've, we've not done anything formally, but I know in our city there are these sports ministries, um, ministries that are geared, you know, they, they may play soccer, they may have soccer camps, and uh, through that they reach out to people. So sports um, becomes one way by which they can reach out to people. Um, or having an arts conference or you know, creative or giving opportunity for people in, in this space, so arts and entertainment to come and you know, share their talent um, becomes an opportunity to reach people. So we can think of ways by which we can target needs uh, or target address matters that are, are of importance to people in these different spheres of activity and uh, reach out to them, okay? Um, now, uh, uh, again, here I feel there's so much that can be done. We at APC are not doing much, uh, but a lot can be done. And we definitely need uh, people who will think strategically and then begin to move into those areas. And, um, you know, uh, for me personally, I, I'm always ready looking after people who have a passion, who want to do something, then we can get behind them and help them carry out those ministries. But we must keep open, right? So I've got a question here. Um, traditionally, the church has kept away from engaging in certain spheres, especially, say, media, arts, entertainment. Uh, how can we get the church to rethink involvement of believers uh, in these areas? So we're talking about, you know, specifically these seven spheres um, and also media, arts, and entertainment. How can we get the church to begin to engage people in these spheres? spheres? So let's take a few moments just to share thoughts if anybody wants to do that at this time. Uh, you know, how do we get the church to engage in this sphere, in these spheres, especially media, arts, entertainment, uh, come up with strategies, come up with ways of reaching people? Because these are very influential people, you know, people in government, people in education, people in business. How can we get the church to engage? Now, please feel free to share your thoughts. Anyone? You're with me so far. I think it's really quiet today. Go ahead, love to hear your thoughts, love to hear what you have to say. Um, okay, I see uh, Sri Kumar's talking about having special conferences, doing conferences that are relevant to people in these different spheres. Yes, that's, that's good. Anything else? Okay. All right. So I think we have a lot of thinking to do, a lot of strategizing to do. Um, uh, and, and, and if I look at our own church, or people's church, I, I feel, you know, uh, there's a lot more that we should be doing in our city uh, to, re to reaching people actively. Now, um, uh, of course, uh, the simplest and the easiest, you know, they call it low-hanging fruit, is that uh, you already have believers in the church who are involved in these spheres. You know, there are already people in the church who are involved in education. There are already people in the church who are involved maybe uh, to some extent in, in government or civil services. Um, there are already people in the church who are involved in media or technology, whatever. There are the, the only people there. Uh, so uh, the first thing that can be done is to uh, empower these people 
to make a difference uh, in their own spheres because they're, they're in it, you know, five days a week, uh, they're going into those spheres, they're there. So that could be a good starting point. And I see Abhinis' uh, comment there, uh, educating about the need uh, in the church. Yeah. So uh, I think that 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 would be a, a good study point to mobilize our own people who are already there in the church, they're already in the congregation, uh, and saying, look, when you go out into these different spheres, uh, you're interacting with people, you're interacting with influential people. Uh, how can you make a difference? You're getting that going. And um, from there, you know, praying that God would birth certain ministries, you know, uh, in all these different spheres so that we can uh, begin to engage those spheres uh, uh, meaningfully, serve people in those spheres of activity, like, you know, those who are in media, how can we serve them? How can we address their needs? Uh, those who are in education, how can we serve them? How can we address their needs? And so if we can mobilize people in our congregations, first of all, to impact their spheres, because they're already going into it five days a week, six days a week. And then from there to birth certain ministries that can serve. I think that's a, in, an interesting um, journey to make. Uh, and uh, uh, we have not done too much, but uh, I would definitely love to see that happen you know, at all people's church and see it happen so we can engage these spheres. And I would encourage you also uh, in your churches and your ministries uh, to think along those lines. God may give you some ideas um, to, to reach different spheres of activity. Let me see what Kennedy says. Kennedy says, by, by, uh, by, uh, by engagement, and empowering the word of God and financially, true. That we could empower people to do something. Yeah. Um, so Asha sharing about um, uh, inviting people. So our Bible college students um, who are here on campus, uh, they go out on Thursdays. They go out to um, uh, uh, evangelize near our co new colleges that are nearby. Mm -hmm. So they, they distribute flyers um, and they're inviting students to um, the seminar series of faith and science. So, so that's practically the, you know, reaching out to college students, inviting them. So our bank residential bank college students uh, are doing that uh, as they reach out to the colleges uh, near area. Great. Okay. So let's wrap this up. I just, uh, uh, Tarun, I just see Tarun's comment. Churches can lead film festivals, contests, build facilities. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, churches can, uh, yeah, if, if, if they're able to engage, like what Tarun has said, you know, very meaningfully, specifically. So if it's a film festival, if the church can do something really good, it will definitely uh, attract people to come. And, and of course, it becomes a, a point of serving, a point of interfacing with people in that sphere of activity, or have some sort of uh, contest or things that where people can come and engage, um, build facilities. Yeah, and I understand that that, that would be a, a, a big undertaking, right? Um, but that can be done, yeah. Yeah, I think we just need vision and oh, Taran, go ahead, say. Yeah, I just wanted to say like it's mostly theme based uh, uh, facilities. Like, you know, most uh, people will be looking out for good digital studios to come up with something. We, if we have facilities that we can lend out, uh, mm. the right groups, uh, although the groups come together to, you know, compose a song or something, they, they lack the right facilities and the instruments and things like that. But if we have something and if, if we have theme based contests, like even if it's a film festival, uh, there are like uh, short film festivals that they do specifically on themes. Uh, if we set a theme and uh, invite people to participate in that, we might end up getting a, a pool of good short films, which are very meaningful, which will help in evangelizing. Uh, so. It, it's the way we design and uh, the contest 
uh, so that we we invite the right group to participate and also help them to to stand out uh, in the industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. It's interesting. You know, we've got to try these things out and, and especially yeah, see how we can uh, use those good thoughts, good thoughts. Okay, anything else? Anybody? Okay. So, um, you know, think about those different spheres of activity. I think a, a lot can be done if we begin to think about this and uh, and uh, you know, move into these areas strategically. Um, basically, we are meeting in the influential. Uh, there could be people who are influential, maybe in thought. They are thought leaders in those areas. They could be influential in terms of being high achievers, celebrities, so on. Uh, and so, if we can, you know, uh, think about these things, we can make a difference. Think about Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, he was a rich man. He was interested in looking at Jesus. Who is this Jesus? He's, he was curious. And uh, exactly, Jesus impacted him. He said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your home today. And uh, he impacted Zac Zacchaeus. And you know, there, there was a turnaround in his life and we don't know how many others may have been impacted because of uh, Zacchaeus being touched. Uh, by the Lord Jesus. So reaching people in these spheres of activity uh, is, uh, is, um, uh, is important. They will then impact many others who are, are being influenced by them. So we need to think through all these things. Right? So um, we'll pick this up next week. We will uh, just talk about strategies. Uh, using tools, and I can you know, maybe share some of the things we are doing here on how uh, uh, actually these tools are very useful uh, in, in, in reaching people. We'll talk about that, and then we'll get into the seven mountain assignment. All right. So thanks. I hope uh, you know these 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 sessions are just getting you to think uh, of uh, ideas and strategies and the different groups of people that, you, that we need to be reaching. Uh, as we plant churches in urban centers. Okay, let's close in prayer. I may I request somebody just to pray with us and then we can close. Would like Thank to pray? Go ahead, Tara. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what we have learned and discussed through this class. Father, we pray uh, that it is you who places. Um, uh, magnificent goals and the plans that you have for your church are mighty lord father we pray that uh, you use each one of them who is listening to this as instruments uh, to do your mighty work lord father we pray that uh, you instill the courage and confidence uh, as uh, we think through these ideas that we get to make it happen for we know that you are a god who is standing behind and you are the one who is uh, going ahead and doing this for us lord we we thank you for what we have learned through we thank you uh, for helping us expand uh, our thoughts. We, we pray that uh, we continue to ponder on this and uh, accomplish what you want us to accomplish uh, through these classes, Lord. Uh, we thank you for uh, Pastor Ashish who has taught us today. We pray that you richly bless him. And uh, uh, we, we pray uh, for a good rest of the week, Lord. We thank you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good break. I'll see you again soon. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, boss.